Hello guys, since uh, my other video about flipping, uh, to me it got a lot of good feedback, it was nice. I decided to make another video this league for this league. Uh, this league, I decided I wasn't going to flip, I gave myself a little bit of a challenge. No flipping, uh, no like trading, nothing like that, no flipping either items or currency, nothing like that. I decided I wanted to acquire a headhunter by doing nothing but mapping and crafting. Um, Crafting is hit or miss a lot, so that's not too, too, too much of a good one. But mapping, 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 mapping is amazing. So this video might be a little bit long, but it's going to be filled with content regarding mapping and how to make currency mapping. Spoiler alert, we got our headhunter. Uh, we have roughly uh, 30 exalts here, uh, probably less, honestly. And then maybe 25, yeah, about 25 exalts there. Uh, we have another, you know, headhunter there. Uh, roughly, let's see, 40 exalt in this tab. So we've we've made a decent bit of currency. Um, mostly mapping, a little bit of crafting as well. So I wanted to address that mapping, mapping. How to make how to make currency mapping. Um, there's a lot of atlas strategies right now going around. There's the vault strategy. There's uh, the strand and channel strategy from Cute Dog. Uh, I've tried one myself with burial chambers. It didn't work out because I'm playing EK and it's just not a good layout for EK. I'm losing a bunch of time. It's not worth it. But if you're playing a map that can clear burial chambers extremely fast and that doesn't like that can actually run and not shield charge something like. Uh, MF Windripper on a Raider that runs at like the speed of light. Burial Chambers is probably amazing. But since I'm playing EK and I'm shield charging, I was just running into every wall and it was it was it was bad. Uh, I have to admit I spent something like 30 to 40 exalts trying different Atlas strategies until uh, I came up with uh, something something that actually was worth it, something that I enjoy doing. And it's funny enough because some other YouTuber well, I don't consider myself a YouTuber, but some YouTuber called Grim, Grimro Poe or something like that, made a, a YouTube video uh, regarding his Atlas update, his Atlas strategy update, and it's the exact same thing as me. And I was running this before he put out his video. I'm not saying like uh, I'm not saying that like he stole my idea or I stole his. I'm just saying we have the same idea. It's kind of funny. Uh, so if you want to see an in-depth guide to this Atlas strategy, honestly, go watch his video. Uh, I'm gonna link his his uh the video in the description of this video it's super good super in-depth and it takes a while so i don't really want to get into it because if i do uh i'm gonna run out of time this video is gonna go on forever so the only thing you need to know is my t11 my only one is atoll my t12 is dunes my t13 is infested valley with my um elder uh, parked over here so i can ping pong infested valley t14 is vault to sell them because they're worth uh, 10 to 13 chaos uh, each depending on what time you sell them and then my siege map for uh, reason I went siege and he's he doesn't say anything about that in his video he said your t15 doesn't matter but that's not true I think siege is by far the best the reason for that is if you park your elder here you're always gonna have this constant like elder influence around here and shaper here so if you amass a few uh, t15s from killing the boss of infested valley then you can actually just do these few maps and your siege is going to go shaper influence and then you can ping pong it from shaper to elder as well and have a chance to drop an i don't know if it's opal or steel ring but i know there's an atlas base ring that drops in siege i don't know if it's opal or steel but since it's an eye level 81 map you have the chance at a shaper or elder eye level 81 steel or opal ring and if you get just one of those they can be worth up to 50 exalts because the base is so damn rare. There's like only a few on the entire server. So, you know, I think it's worth it. It's worth the trouble. Honestly, 4% uh, more Atlas completion to me is not worth it for the chance that you have of uh, running this. As well as Siege's really good layout. It's, it's super straightforward. It's super good. So, yeah, I'm going to be linking his video for the Atlas strategy. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I wish I had done that before. Like I said, I, I didn't actually take it from his video. I came up with this myself, but um, it's kind of funny because he put his video out like 
a few days after I actually tried this out. Because as I said, I spent a lot of fucking currency uh, resetting my atlas a bunch of times. I tried the strand strategy, didn't really like it. Um, it's just, it's too low tier. I don't know. I just there's nothing to kill in strand. There's like three packs of mobs. I didn't like it. Tried the builders chambers. Uh, I tried the vault strategy as well. I didn't get any returns. That was awful. The reason for that is. To, if you want to do the vault strategy where you like fully sex in it and all that, uh, you want to play in a group with like a MF Windripper full MF, like 100% full MF Windripper uh, Raider probably, or Pathfinder, I don't know. Like in a full group, that's the only way you're going to get returns, honestly. Uh, at least for me, that's how it felt for me when I was doing solos, uh, even with just a few sex because fully sex something it was pretty stupid uh, in terms of... Uh, how much it cost so you know yeah vault was not good um i don't know if i shown it slash played yeah slash played is pretty insane seven days 19 hours that's not actually true you'd have to divide that by twice or by two times maybe even three times reason being uh, i always let my computer open with path of exile open uh when uh, whenever i'm at home or even when i go out the only time it's not open is whenever i'm at work or i'm sleeping Otherwise, I'll leave it open because uh, sometimes people uh, PM you for big ticket items. Yeah, this that was a low ball. <laughs> I kind of ignored that. But uh, for big ticket items, and I want to be here to, to I want to be able to see uh, the PMs and then whisper them back like if they still need it. I've had a few big ticket items sell from doing that, and it's you know it's whatever. I don't really care about my slash plate anyways. But that's I'm just saying that's not my actual slash blade. You have to divide that by two or maybe even three to get my actual uh, slash played to be able to calculate how much money I've been making per hour with this strategy. And as I sped, said, I've uh, spent a bunch. I've also crafted a bunch. Yesterday I threw uh, 500 chaos at this dagger and then I sold another five exalts for chaos and used about 200 or 300 uh, of those chaos. So, uh, you know, 800 chaos. No, wait, it was 700. Uh, so a thousand chaos spend on a dagger f for absolutely no reason just because i felt like it just because i'm trying to get something that's like mirror worthy so i'm just spamming the hell out of this it's like a eye level 83 i just realized that later i should have gotten eye level 84 to be able to, to roll like t1 spell damage so that was kind of dumb but it's whatever so that's pretty much it for the atlas strategy now when it comes to mapping how to uh, make your mapping more efficient well, the number one way is to get a bright beak. If you're if you're playing a build that can use bright beak, use it. It's it's gonna double your shield charge speed. Honestly, uh, I don't know if you can use a bright beak on whirling blades. I haven't played a whirling blades character in forever. Uh, if not, just get some attack speed daggers. But just get something fast to move around fast. Then I'd say a light poacher. It's amazing. It's basically like fall fireball all over again in a single helmet. You you use a Greater multiple projectiles, volley and fizz to lightning. Uh, I just stole that from Zizern. That's what he used in his, and apparently that's what he said was the best. I don't know. I didn't test anything else. I just think it's amazing as it is. So, Biscos, I mean, if you have the, the exalts, just buy one. It's like 15 to 20 exalts, sure. I don't care. Buy one. You're going to get so much more returns, so much more everything it's it's worth it if you can run it if you don't need the damage get him get him get him get him um shield doesn't matter rare shield uh i went for some mf boots didn't really need it uh damage leeches life and mana is actually really important or else you're always going to run out of mana especially with headhunter and how spammy it is <laughs> like you can it's crazy um venters more quantity more quantity always more quantity uh, I got a decent one here where some like 15 exalts. This one's just trash. Uh, it just fixed my resistance exactly what I needed, so I just threw it on there. Insanity gloves uh, crafted. Any gloves crafted with eth essence of insanity will give you 16% more attack and cast speed. And then I was lucky enough to get a T1 attack speed roll on top and an open prefix for some life. So these gloves, I'm going to be using those forever. They basically double my shield charge attack speed just like the bright beak so in the end i'm super 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 duper fast and i can run some mf boots without much movement speed on them uh just to show you real quickly i guess i'll go in like blood aqueducts oh yeah finally another way to make your uh shield charge way faster 
get Blood Rage. If you can if you can fit it in your build, if you have enough dexterity, uh, get it to level 20. If not, just get it to as high as you can. If you don't mind the degen, if you're playing a build that, that doesn't care about the degen, that can uh, ignore it, it is so worth it, man. 20% attack speed is huge. So I'm just going to quickly, real quickly show you um, how fast this is. Also, by the way, one last thing I always forget about. Uh, jewel like this, get yourself a jewel like this, 5% chance to gain Onslaught on kill for 4 seconds. When you're mapping, you're killing everything so fast. It's basically Onslaught up 100% of the time for free. It's just one jewel slot. Uh, one jewel slot. Um, so then you don't have to run a silver flask, and instead you can run a diamond, obviously, and a quicksilver, and as well as two damage flask. Um, Edzeri and Taste of Hate for me, and then an insta bleeding flask always. Um, it's important to note that I do kill all the bosses from my T11 to 15 maps. I do kill all the bosses, and the reason for that is I use Vol Breach, and my damage is high enough that it only takes a few seconds to kill them, so to me it's worth it. Taking an extra 10 seconds to kill a boss that has a really high chance of dropping a map return, or even a plus 2 map, and also more loot, is 100% worth it to me. So I kill the bosses if you don't want to, if you don't have the damage to do so. Uh, if you don't have like a 2126 link ethereal knives, maybe, yeah, maybe you're not going to want to kill bosses because you're not going to have enough damage. But if you can afford to do it within just like 10, 10 seconds for a boss, 10 seconds for a T15 siege boss, it's it's worth it. You just pop out breach and, you know, and they're super cheap this league. You can get one for like 20 chaos, like no quality. I think a high quality one's maybe 30 chaos. So it's super, super good. Get that. Vibe Breach on EK is mandatory, honestly, if you want to be able to kill a single target. Or else you're just not going to be able to. You're going to run out of mana every like two casts, and it's going to feel really bad. So real quickly, I'm just going to run a, a Blood Aqueduct run just to show you how freaking fast you can map on a character like this. Bright Beak. Double insanity gloves, a little bit of moving speed there, um, and always quicksilver flask of adrenaline. That's just crazy, crazy, crazy move speed. So what you do? You pop blood rage, pop flask, and shield charge. Pop, uh, what's it called again? Pop onslaught, and you're just, you're just, yeah, you know. Yep, there it is. That's, yep. That's how you make money, man. Just. Just going at this speed in something like a dunes, you only pick up, get it, get yourself a really good loot filter. So all you have to pick up is uh, good uniques, current, high, well, medium and high currencies. You don't want to pick stuff like alterations. And then maps always pick up like pretty much every map, honestly, because of how the Atlas works right now. Uh, sometimes you need random maps and you want to be able to run, uh, to pick them up. So just have a filter that shows you maps uh, Depending on the level of your current map, so for me in a T, uh, in a T12 map, I only see like T7 and higher, so I know they're actual maps I probably want if I want to be able to, let's say, uh, push my elder to some places. So I do pick those up, but not if I have to backtrack for them. But if they're just there sitting there, I pick them up. Uh, breaches, do them. Don't use the Xana mod for them. Um, I, I I spent like 10x getting Xana eight. Uh, in like one sitting from six to eight, and it was totally not worth it. I'm not running breach; it slows you down way too much. If you have a, a natural breach spawn in your map, though, come, yeah, for sure you do. It's free money. And if you have abysses, um, abyss holes, do do the abyss. Don't go in the hole. Well, go in the hole. Check if it's a lich. Uh, if it is, do it because it has a chance to drop the chest, which is worth a lot. Otherwise, don't do it. Don't do the normal lich. Uh, normal abyss holes they're just not worth the time the reason you do them though is for the chest that pops at the end uh, of the the cracks there's a chest that pops and those can drop map returns and good currency so you do uh abysses it's also really good xp there's a ton of rares so it's decent but yeah uh, to know if it's in a, a, a lich at the end of the hole all you do is you, whenever you go in you up your your uh, music volume and you're gonna hear a, a really distinct music i don't it's like spooky type of music if you hear the spooky spooky music it means there's a lich at the end so what you do is uh you run it you kill a lich you see you'd probably get a really shit um like poacher or a pair of gloves 
uh, that's worth absolutely nothing. But you know, you, maybe you might get lucky and get a chest piece that's worth a few exalts. I think up to like seven. I don't know the price. I've never had one, never bought one. Don't really care. So yeah, that's enough rambling. I think uh, there's a lot of content in this video. If you have any question, honestly, just feel free to ask. Uh, I'll answer to everything and anything I can, and I have the knowledge to answer to. Uh, I will link Grimm's video to the Atlas strategy because it's way more in depth. And um, happy mapping, really. You don't have to flip. And maybe next league I'm going to be doing only crafting. I get myself a headhunter with only crafting. Uh, because I think what makes PoE fun is playing temp leagues. I don't play standard. Playing temp leagues and giving myself challenges. Uh, like My challenge this league was to only map, get my headhunter with only mapping and a bit of crafting but mostly just mapping um no flipping so next league i'm going to try something different and then next league something different and uh i'm probably going to try different out of strategies uh when i do have the currency that i feel i don't really care anymore whenever i get bored i'm probably going to try some more atlas strategies see if i can come up for something even with something even better for next league but for now that is pretty much the strategy is the more consistent and uh the best in terms, like I said, of consistency. If you want to go for the big dick strategy, go for vault. But that's that's a hit or miss, man. You can you can lose a ton of exalts playing that. So not for me. Um, yeah, honestly, if you're wondering like how how do you make so much money mapping, you gotta realize that a single six socket item is seven fusings, which is almost two or seven jewelers, which is almost two fusings. And like two fusings is almost a chaos. So it's almost almost a chaos, basically. On average, they drop maybe twice per map, and then you have some other currency. On average, I'd say you probably make four or five chaos per per map, and those are all and go. You don't even chisel them, so just all can go. You make like three, four, five chaos on average per map. Around five with a biscos, probably around three without a biscos. Like it's. And and that's without the map drops. Map drops are basically a double, triple that, quadruple that. Like sometimes you run one dunes, you get like f freaking f like two dunes back and two infested valleys and an atoll. Like that's thirty chaos worth of maps. It's nuts. So yeah, I mean I think that's uh pretty much it for this video. And uh, happy mapping. Good luck if you have any questions. Feel free to ask them. Also, oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, something I got a message uh, yesterday. I found that was really nice um, Some guy uh, after seeing my flipping video PM to me on discord. He's like hey, man uh, Like how do you do this tell me the ins and outs and all that so we spoke for a while um, We started we started we spoke mostly the 19th of December which is like two weeks ago or almost three weeks ago, I guess Yeah Pretty much two, three weeks ago, we were talking. I told him pretty much the ins and outs, of flipping, what to do, how to do, like whatever, whatever. And then uh, two days ago, I was like, hey, dude, I was wondering how he's doing in terms of flipping and stuff. And he's like, hey, but I made 200x flipping while playing a new build, pretty much. So he's flipping and mapping at the same time. He made 200 exalts in like two weeks and a half. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. So. Flipping is still amazing. Mapping is amazing as well. Combining the two is also amazing. So there's just a ton of ways to make currency. Flipping is just one of them. Mapping is another. I'll be doing a video probably about crafting. Maybe next league. Maybe sometime soon actually. Because I've been spending a lot on crafting. Like a lot. I've made a decent bit. But I've been trying to make a mirror base. And it's killing me. So thanks for watching. Have fun. Kill stuff. Make money. Yeah. GG.